Greetings! We are your nerd theorists. My name's Dave, and today I'm going to be talking to you about getting a really good stone effect for when you paint in scenery for Dungeons and Dragons, Warhammer, Kings of War. So any castles or ruined terrain you've got, we're going to go and look at a good technique that's going to give you this really good weathered natural stone look. Now I've been in the middle of a personal vanity project since Christmas. I've been 3D printing this beautiful, beautiful turtle with fortress on its back that you can get from Loot Studios. Um, it's taken more time than I expected, months to print on a small little 3D printer and far more resin than I'm willing to publicly admit, but the end result is gorgeous and now Obviously, it's got this epic castle on the back, which I'm in the middle of painting right now. But I've uh, come across some really good techniques for getting a really natural weathered stone look, and I thought it was time to share it with you guys. And I don't get out from behind the editing booth very often, so it's nice just to get a video out there for you all. So, let's have a look and see what we can do. Now, we're looking for a weathered stone effect, which is going to have a lot of grime on there, a lot of dirt, a lot of wear and tear, lots of different textures. So, although I've undercoated this model with a surface primer, which is a very light grey, just to make sure that it locks in that resin and it makes everything nice and even for a coat of paint, I'm going over the actual stonework of the castle of this in a uh, just a, an airbrushed black, just to give us that, that base shading that's going to underpin the whole model. It's dead easy to do, just get your standard primer done and then wait for it to dry, come back, coat the whole thing in a lovely dark matte black and then when it's dry we're ready to move on to the next stage and start getting some colour on there. Now for the um, the next layer what we need to do is we're, we're going to get in a, a tan colour to sort of underpin and, and be our, our, our base, base palette from which we're going to work from. So I've gone for uh, Citadel's Kislev Flesh which is a, an almost terracotta sort of tan brown. It's, it's fantastic for what we need to do now. It's a very small pot, and as you can see by the size of the brush I'm using, there's a lot of paint going on there, so uh, we need to buy a new pot of that soon, I think. It's, uh, it's wasted the whole lot. But if you, um, you go over just big, fat decorator's brush for this, go over everything, make sure you get everywhere. Don't forget you leave a little bit. Just get the surface of it. You can leave plenty of the black showing underneath and all the cracks. That'll give us a nice natural shade. But equally, don't worry too much if you're going to go and, uh, you know, overbrush in a few places. We can fix that later. That's absolutely fine. But this is going to be the core of everything we're going to do to this model. We're going to get this, this base tone here, and then we're going to build from there and develop this really nice looking natural brickwork. And once that's all dry and done and you've got this beautiful tan castle that's just sat there looking a little bit confused about what it wants to be, we're going to get out a, uh, a yellow and a brown. Now for this I used some uh, De La Roni artist series. I used a burnt siena, sienna and a yellow ochre and we're going to put uh, on your palette just get the blob of each and then in the middle just a 50 50 mix of both uh, and using the same brush just pick out at random across the castle um, individual bricks or sections in yellows and, and the siennas and the mix of the two and don't bother cleaning your brush in between them because it'll keep that natural variance up if you're just layering it on and, and mixing as you go and the theory is is that you know it's very rare that anybody builds a castle out of unified stonework so uh, there'll be lots of different materials used lots of different stones in there and this although it looks quite bold and garish at the moment when we bring it together in a bit this will add a whole lot of natural variance to the stones that will start shining through underneath the coats we're going to put on top so yeah just get in there all over the place as much as you like uh, say make sure there's no pattern to it make it as random as you can clump it together leave bits blank Add lots in certain areas. Just you know, make sure you're trying to be as randomised as you can for this to make it look like it's a natural spread across the whole thing. So that's great. Now we've got a castle that looks like a spotty child. It's got blemishes all over the place in various different colours, yellows, browns, everything in between. And it, it looks a bit of a mess, but that's perfect. That's what we're looking for right now. So we're going to take it up a notch. What's coming next is we're going to get... Um, a green. Now I, I used um, Citadel's War Flesh, which is one of their base colours, 
uh, and you can put this wherever you like really now this model has got vines and roots crawling around it so I've just sort of smeared it and, and dabbed it around where those vines would be in order to to make it look like there's a creeping moss coming off of them but you can put it under under areas where you know there won't be much light for example under the overhangs of the towers or under the windows and it's it's just to further emphasize that this is this is aged stone that's been around a while that's got plenty of lichen and moss growing on it and, and little bits of algae in places that are perpetually damp so we'll cover the whole model wherever it seems suitable in a bit of this green again don't be timid about it just slop it on there make sure that it's uh, where you want it to be but also make sure that it's going to at the end of the day be in a place that's natural so if you expect there to be running water somewhere you're going to want a bit of green algae or if there's a place a crevice where some moss could grow dab a bit of green in there and just you know go across the whole model and make sure you're, you're quite satisfied with this so there you are that's the um that's the lion's share of the uh this layer done as you can see it's uh looks a bit of a mess it's ideal really all those blotches greens browns yellows everything it's all ready to go so we'll move on to the next stage right now we're going to move to the next layer and do excuse the state of my desk at this stage we're deep into our uh, magic the gathering league and at this point when i was painting i was desperately trying to come up with some new decks that would give me a chance against andrew in his horrendously powerful collection um keep watching that by the way that's all available on the channel i think um you know it's very interesting plenty of hours of uh, magic 4v4 commander for you all to watch but more importantly back to the model at this stage keeping with the palette of the uh, yellows browns the tan color we've put on we're going to go over everything with a relatively heavy dry brush of bone now for this i'm using two citadel paints in a 50 50 mix i'm using screaming skull and wraith bone and again we're going to get the decorator brush of this and we're just going to slop it on we're going to go over and and because we're dry brushing over the existing colors that are quite strong in a similar palette what's going to happen is bits of them are going to start showing through and as a result you're going to see that natural variation it's going to look very clean though which is something we'll deal with in a bit but we'll just go around the whole model dry brush everywhere again don't be timid about it get it on there um, and don't worry too much if you lose a bit of detail in some places by the time we get to the wash stage we'll, we'll bring a lot of that back um, now for the really fun stage so to add the weathering at this point what we need to do is we need to get a lot of black wash and I'm not talking about a bit of null oil or anything like that I'm talking about making your own wash so uh, get a big tube of artist acrylic nice and cheap doesn't need to be anything too special get yourself a beaker big dollop in the bottom little touch of uh, fairy liquid or whatever other dish soap you like to use and then top it up with water and what you want to do is you want to mix and mix and mix until all of the pigment from that acrylic is suspended in the water and then test it on a bro uh, on a it's a kitchen roll and if you're leaving a good dark trail then you've got the right consistency if it looks a little bit washed out add more and mix again and keep going until you've got that really good dark wash and then then just slop it all over this model this beautiful castle that we've put together with its shining bone colored walls slop the wash on two coats if you want depending on how thick it is but get it in all the crevices let it run down and put something underneath it by the way because i didn't and it took me ages to clean the desk yeah so just go all around make sure it's everywhere in every nook every cranny make sure you get it in all the floor down all the steps don't miss anything this is going to weather that stone it's going to make it look magnificent and that's essentially it now once you've got your stonework done like that and you've let it dry you've got this really dingy looking castle it's fantastic obviously you're gonna have to put the rest of the details in there i've got a lot of work to do on those vines I'm gonna put some lights in the windows and in a minute i'll show you how to do a nice terracotta roof but in terms of the castle that's more or less it and when you've finished with everything you can get a uh, get a, a really really delicate white dry brush perhaps and just go over it just going vertically down to show that the light is catching the upper edges from above but it's not necessary uh, at the moment it already looks fantastic and once you put it in amongst your other terrain it's going to look amazing but moving on i can quickly do the terracotta roofs now this is dead simple to do it's 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 no problem at all to get these tiles done all you need is once again sticking with that tan color i got kislev flesh and i got a uh, valeco heavy red and i did it in a uh, two-thirds 
pan to one third red ratio, mix them up, get that nice terracotta color. And you just coat the roof, get that all sorted, nice thick layer of that on there. And then when that's dried, we move on, we pull out Citadel's Bestigor Flesh, which is a uh, really light orange color, and just delicately dry brush that, just catch the edges of all the tiles to show that weathering process that they're gonna get from the sun and the rain. Once that's done, we wanna pull out a wash just to bring out all the color, and we're pulling out Reikland Flesh Shade, which is an excellent Citadel wash, because it's a flesh wash. It's not just a dark brown, it's got a hint of red in it as well, which works perfectly with the oranges we're looking to use here. So liberally apply that over everywhere because there's going to be a lot of shadows on the edges of these and you're going to get a lot of depth and the appearance of, of greater depth if you just fill all the crevices with the wash. And again, when that's finally dry, all you need to do now is uh, pick back up on the uh, the Kislev Flesh that was our very first colour and just pick out the edges. A little really delicate dry brush. You can edge highlight if you like, but I think something like this, dry brushing works better because it gives it that more weathered look whereas edge highlighting tends to be quite a clean thing if you compare say a space marine to a piece of stone you, you don't want to have that clean line of the edges you want a more weathered haphazard look where the brush has maybe gone and done a little extra for you and there we have it what a simple process it gives you really great effect i mean just take a look put the stone work on that now obviously at this point i've not added the extra highlight because i'm still working on the rest of the castle but the variation in the stone is magnificent. Absolutely natural looking castle. And by the time everything's finished, you're gonna look at that and think, wow, so much effort went into that. But actually, it was all just clever preparation. But yeah, excellent, look. If you've enjoyed this, please do like and subscribe. I'll try and get out from behind the editing screen a little bit more often, do a few more of these. I'll try and update you on the rest of Mr. Turtle. I've got that done and I will of course show you the completed castle when that's done as well but in the meantime thank you very much for watching take care